Hello! This is my video on San Benito, California RV Resort in Pacines, California. I already did this video. It was 31 minutes and it got erased. So let's do another one, shall we? Okay, you know where I'm parked right now? I am uh, parked down the road from my childhood home. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. Um, so that's where I am. Um, actually, uh, I'm by the woods where when I was a kid, we used to uh, play around in the woods and we just thought that, I just thought it was the funnest thing ever is to play around in the woods. So I'm parked right by the woods that I used to play in and it actually is owned by the neighbors and if they catch me I, they could tell me to leave but nobody's here so I'm just gonna stay here until somebody tells me to go um okay back to my story where I left off I started my trip in Palm Desert California and um it was a four and a half hour drive theoretically, but um, it um, I'm sure it took longer than that because I was driving up um, around hills and twists and turns and it was the mountains again, very much like uh, my Idlewild drive, but, um, but not without the snow. Um, but I didn't like it. I don't, I don't like all those um, fast twists and turns and, and clips. The, it's very scary and dangerous and um, I was, I'm was i a new tower and I just, I, if I had known about the terrain I, I would have passed. But what I found out later was that um, the locals, um, they go in the opposite, from the opposite direction, coming from the north. And then they avoid all of the, the long mountain drive, which would have been nice to avoid. But I would have had to have gone farther north, past my campground, and in order to come back and avoid all the mountains. So, anyway. So the GPS said that this is the fastest way to get there, so I, that's how I got there. Okay, so I finally arrived, and um, what I discovered was that the staff was extremely friendly much like um, the, the uh, Palm Springs RV Resort and um, sickly sweet friendly and um, they were just unbelievably accommodating and they were just great never a problem nothing all of them and they were awesome so this, this sure is a, a change and a difference from my ex negative experiences in Washington State. So I can't say anything bad about my campground uh, membership company in a general sense um, because I can only um, point the finger at the, the, uh, the local ones that that were difficult, but definitely not at the at the whole company. That would not be a fair assessment. Okay, so I found another pull through. Yay! <laughs> I don't have to worry about um, backing up, which I can't do. Um, it's a very large campground. Um, lots of room, lots of spaces lots of squirrels. This was a unique campground. Um, it, they do not allow rodenticides. Um, and this, and you can tell because there are a lot of squirrels. Um, in a small patch of grass there's like half a dozen squirrels and there's always, they're running back and forth all over the place. Yeah, it's kind of out of control. But when I first got in there I saw a, um, a boar, wild boar, and I, I ran toward it, and it kind of squealed away. <laughs> um, yeah, I just kind of wonder about that. Like, do they allow that? Or I guess, 
I suppose they don't necessarily allow or not allow. It just happens. It just goes with the territory. I was in another campground where there was a, uh, in the middle of the night, there was one that came kind of past or through our campsite. Anyway, um, okay. So, uh, where I parked, um, was ultimately between uh, a lesbian couple and the first set was um, an older couple where the man looked like uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, <laughs> he was really nice and um, I developed a rapport with him and the wife too, uh, but mostly um, me and, um, uh, and Anthony Hopkins look alike. Um, we're talking a lot about stuff and he was helping me explaining to me stuff about my electrical cord and and also told me about some of his experiences how uh, in one place where he where his burnt out or it it, um, it fried yeah so sometimes that happens but I do have a, um, a surge protector um, anywho um, so, I had been talking with the this couple in the Anthony Hopkins lookalike, and he, they, uh, it was the wife's idea that they gave me their tent. Yeah, and it was the same same exact tent as one I already had, but it had a couple rips and tears in it, and uh, one of the and the um, poles had broken in the wind. So that was pretty cool. So there was my extra set of poles. Yay! Um, so there was that. They were real, so yeah, they were really nice. And then, um, so a problem that I had was there was an elderly man that came into my camp when I was outside. And he was starting to talk to me and um, we had a nice conversation and then at the end he said that he was telling me I was pretty and then he asked for my phone number and I got really uncomfortable and I was trying to turn him off you know by ignoring him you know that kind of thing and um, so that was the end of that for that day and then another day he came by again and um, I was inside my trailer and I said I was busy and he basically said he didn't understand so I stopped talking and then he left and then I thought okay the, the guy's gone he's not coming back he's not gonna bother me again he's, he's getting the message and then he came back again uh, a few days later and finally I'd, I'd had it and I, I said, you're not welcome here. You're not welcome in my camp, go away. Get, get out of my camp, kind of a thing. And, um, and then he started getting real defensive, like what did I do, I didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't matter if you did anything wrong. When somebody doesn't want you in their camp, you can't stay in their camp. You don't go in somebody's camp when if you're not invited either you don't cross into somebody's camp you know that that is um, a no-no yeah and there seems to be a lot of people that don't get that anyway um, he, he was it was like pulling teeth getting him to go away to leave and then but finally he did and as he was he was he was in this bicycle tricycle thing like a granny a granny bike with this basket on the back and um, but the one of the lesbians came out and she said are you all right to me and um, so she watched him as he drove his tricycle down the pathway yeah so but he never he finally he never came back again after that so um, I'm sorry I didn't introduce you. I guess I guess I just lost track because um, because this is my second time around. Um, yeah, here at um, 
the San Benito campground, I had some some issues, some interesting stories, and uh, yeah, that was the first one. <sighs> the old the old man perv, and um, and then the nice people they gave me a tent. Yay! Okay, so. I took a shower one day. It was my second or third shower in the because my campground membership provides showers and toilet privileges. And um, I was in the shower. I was in the, and um, I don't know if I, I think I was already, the water was running. I believe that water was running, but I was naked. And, um, you know, if you, if whenever anybody is in doubt about if there is somebody in a toilet or a shower, all you have to do is look under the curtain, look under the door, just look down below and see if there's any feet down there. If there's any feet, you know there's somebody in there not difficult well so this girl comes into the bathroom and she and I can see her through the crack between the shower curtain and the wall didn't quite cover it completely I could I could see her in that little little spot she was wearing a, a bathrobe and uh, socks with slipper flip-flops and a towel around her head and I could see all of this just through the crack and she looked straight at me eye contact straight at me and uh, I looked right at her and then she turned around like like it was silly turn like it like she was goofing off kind of a turn and then she went into the adjacent stall and she acted like she was getting ready to take a shower herself and she started putting clothing up high over the door or something uh, maybe on hooks or something um, that I could see from my shower and she she yeah it appeared that she was gonna take her shower and so I I continued doing what I was doing and uh, and then suddenly she stopped she got out of her stall and opened my curtain and I was stark naked and she says oh sorry I didn't know anybody was in here anyway um, yeah I, re I reported that and everything else that happened I, I told the employees about the perv the old man uh, perv and uh, and this incident yeah all of it so the next thing that happened was um, well why don't I just tell you in general if you ever do want to go to this campground um, the cell phone service does not work now I understand that I believe it was Verizon that kind of worked a little bit anyway uh, I have T-Mobile and it did not work not one bit the only thing that worked was um, 911 uh, and yeah and you can't get uh, like I have data on my phone and I I couldn't get any internet on my phone in my camp, camp spot at all. I could get um, some Wi-Fi in the lodge, the community lodge, but um, and that was kind of iffy sometimes too. So, um, so I needed more ice. I had to go to town so I'd been talking to people and I'd noticed that people leave and they go to town all the time my neighbors do people around me the employees were telling me oh yeah the town is just 20 minutes away 
Well, I wish I would have. I wish that I got m more specific directions because um, I went in the wrong direction. <laughs> I went. The last thing I wanted to do was go back over those same mountain roads that I had just been terrified driving through and do it all over again. But they said it was 20 minutes away. So finally, when I got to a certain location, this, there was a sign that said, it was, I think it was like 45 minutes to Hollister, which is the town I needed to go to. So, so I was pissed and <laughs> turned around. I was worried about using up my gas. That's what I was worried about. And so finally, when I reached the area where I could either continue going in the direction I was or go back to camp I thought I'll just go a little ways so I went forward and lo and behold there was a little store and you know what when you're out in the sticks even a even a little store that doesn't have much is a big deal and and so I was comforted by the fact there was just a, a silly little store but um, they told me that there was a gas station just down the road and there was and I went there and as soon as I filled up with gas I was happy I was calm because as long as I have gas in my tank I'm good I'm good to go I I don't worry about it anymore um, yeah it's that that was my main concern and using up all that gas for nothing you know, I certainly don't want to do that so I just kept going after I got my gas. I continued on into um, Hollister. And it had uh, Safeway and Grocery Outlet and Dollar Tree and all the good stuff that you need when you're going to town. So I, I went back to town several times whenever I needed to. And um, one thing I did was, you see, if you've been watching my last few videos, you know that I got a stomach issue and I can't drink coffee anymore. And um, I had, I stopped drinking coffee and I wasn't having any coffee in the morning and I was feeling very lost without my coffee. And I really missed it and it was making me depressed. And, uh, and uh, But I knew that my stomach can't handle it because I get tremendous pain and then I feel like I'm going to throw up and it, I just can't do it. So, and it's the same thing with tea and chocolate as well. So, it occurred to me, duh, get some decaf, you dork. Okay, so I went to Safeway and lo and behold, Safeway has their wonderful little sale that they buy three, you know, for some special deal. And it was uh, a Starbucks coffee. It was Verona. It was the only decaf uh, Starbucks that there is. Now, I had my favorite regular coffee flavor that I can no longer drink. And, but this, my second favorite that I knew about was a Starbucks brand. Was I believe it was, well, Starbucks Dark Roast. Anyway, that's what I know. Um, and that would have been good coffee for me if, you know, if I were able to drink it. Um, so the Verona is, de is delicious. I skipped a part. The Verona decaf coffee is wonderful. Um, it's fantastic coffee. But before that, I got a, a local brand and I was in the town of Hollister, but the, but the local brand was called Hollis Street Coffee. Who cares? It was decaf and it wasn't Folgers. So, so I did the best that I, I could. So I, I had been drinking the Hollis Street decaf for a while. It was almost gone. And then that's when I went back to Safeway and got the Verona. And I was really happy about that. So I'm really glad that I still get to continue my coffee habit and I really enjoy it. The, the Verona is very delicious. So yay. 
So if you have an ulcer or, or, or any issues along those lines with caffeine, you can drink the Verona. It's very, very good. Okay. Um, but one day I had a negative experience in the city of Hollister, which is about two cities away from from uh, my campground. And um, Tres Peños, I think, first it was Pacines, my campground is in Pacines, then there's Tres Peños, and then there's Hollister. Yeah, okay, so Hollister is the big town with the Safeway and everything. So, and I can tell you all this because I don't plan on going back. <laughs> And I'm definitely not there now, so I'm not worried about location. Giving out my location. Um, so in Hollister, I was coming out of Grocery Outlet. Which was... Well, they had a pretty reasonable price for ice, but actually what I came to find out is... If you want, the most reasonable price for ice is the Dollar Tree. That's the best place to go get ice. It's the cheapest. Anyway, um, I don't think that all the Dollar Trees have ice. But, but anyway, when I go, it, I could be wrong, but when I go, they're, they're definitely the cheapest. Anyway, um, before I knew that, I went to Grocery Outlet to get my ice. I don't know what I was getting that day, but I was coming out of Grocery Outlet. And it appeared that some guy tried to run me over passing you know into the parking lot from the store and I, I can't give I can't give you too many details but he it's like he went toward me and then went away or, or anyway however he did that but there was some another woman a few feet behind me and uh, he almost hit her too and she she yelled and screamed at him. She made a bigger fuss about it than I did. And um, she called 911 and reported him. I guess she had the uh, license plate, too. Um, so she did, she did good. I just thought, what was the point? But that's good. I'm really glad that she did that. So when I got back to camp, I called 911 and I wanted to confirm that she had actually made the report and she had. They they had that information already. Um, they tried to ask me for more details, which I did not have because I was not on the ball like she was. So good for her, whoever she was. Um, Yeah, that that pretty much that was pretty much my trip. Yeah, and and then on my way uh, out of out of the par out of camp, um, it wasn't a big deal at all. I I, I you know uh, I didn't have to go backwards. That's that's what I'm getting at. I could go forwards. There was like three different routes I could take, and um, there was one where I would have to go back over into the uh, mountain roads again. I, I didn't want to take that one. Supposedly that was the fastest one. Not interested, don't care. Um, I took the one going through town. I like I liked that direction the best. Anyway, so that's what I did. So that was my trip in Pacines, California. Uh, my campground experience in uh, San Benito RV Resort. Um, once again, I would highly recommend it uh, if you want friendly staff. And if you have your own rig and your own facilities, your own shower and toilet, I, w I would recommend it. If you don't mind being without cell service for, for whatever period of time you're there. Um, though some, some, uh, companies, uh, will have some cell service, but mine didn't. I think it's Verizon. Anyway, um, so there you go. And, uh, I would never go back. 
absolutely never um, because of the the company there the people the strange people and there were other I was watching people coming in going and yeah there were, there was a lot of people I wouldn't feel comfortable being around and I don't know who that my deal was like in camp about the girl walking in on my shower um, what kind of person does that so So, um, yeah, I would never go back, but, um, but I would highly recommend it to certain people who maybe wouldn't be bothered by such things. So that's all for now. And I'll see you in my next video, uh, where I go. Oh, did I miss that spot? Where I go to Cloverdale, California, um, to Russian River Campground. Yeah, it's only, what was it? I averaged, usually it was about three hours away. Um, I think that's what it was, around three hours. Anyway, um, so I'll see you then. Bye.